Okay, welcome, welcome to the fifth edition. See the one that is in a ribbon in the sky as we welcome you. September 1st, 2020 is here. We're still around COVID. Big up all the fans out there. Gloves off, gloves on. We back on. Yeah. You know. We back on. We Father Gassy. Father Gassy. Rich Thomas, former mayor, we here. And we just wanted to make sure that we brought you back and let you know there's a ribbon in the sky right now. Yeah, for time, you know. <laughs> yeah. Listen to the lyrics, please, please. Wanda. That's right. And you remember uh, your, your mask and your gloves. That's your right. Gloves. Social distancing, you know. Got to keep those hands clean, but also got to keep those masks on. I mean, we got to stop the spread of the virus because it's definitely um, still here, still present. And we want to extend our condolences to all the people that lost a loved one to the COVID. But yeah. more importantly, we, we got to, you know, make sure that we, we keep all of them alive in our hearts and our memories. But, but most importantly, we got to stay vigilant on fighting this damn virus. It has to go away. We got to beat this thing. Um, let me put, give a moment of silence for a Black Panther star who have lost, you know, a baby. That's right. You know, you tell us that's a baby. Um, Albert Bozeman. Yeah. God bless. We're going to do a moment of silence for him because he definitely gave the world the hero it, we all need. And, um, man, that's just a the most big loss. He described in Black movie, I would say, you know, a movie made by pure, you know, you know, Top millennium black people will grab the most, I think over a billion dollar worldwide, yep. you know, but, you know, we lose a shining star and, you know, we send our love to God and condolence, not only to him in a rich, but remember, we have a lot of superheroes out there with young kids, you know, yep. you go Aris, yep. oh yep. my yep. God, I love yes. Black Panther. Yep, I love Black Panther, yes. I am a Black Panther. <laughs> Anyhow, with gloves on, gloves on, you know, we come eating, you know, we don't know what house gloves they're using, but we are not using a featherweight today. Yeah, yeah. We, gotta, we gotta swing on some things. And one thing we gotta swing on is uh, the Kenosha, Wisconsin Sheriff. He, uh, John Oliver did a clip showing two years ago where the Kenosha, Wisconsin Sheriff was calling for ethnic cleansing of black people. And you just got to ask yourself, you know, how did someone rise to power and be able to call for ethnic cleansing on Americans and not be held accountable? And that was two years ago. So it's obvious that, that you know, while we've come so far, we just celebrated the, you know, the 57th anniversary of the March on Washington a few days ago. We still got a march. And we still got to sustain the fight to get racists out of power because that's a powerful position to be able to lock people up and, 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 and take away their liberty. But, but for him to call for ethnic cleansing, it's just crazy. Not only that. Uh, and Democrats and Republicans, both sides of the aisle got to, got to speak on that. I'm sorry. Both sides of the aisle, they got to say that's wrong. He needs to, he needs to go. That guy needs to go. Can't, can't have that in office. You ask yourself if this the America that um, was created by, you know, Frank Roosevelt, you know, is this the America that John F. Kennedy was? Is this the America Martin Luther King? Is this the America Richard Thomas? Because we can't believe the rhetoric we have been hearing for the last That's couple right. of weeks. And the action of the people there. You're wondering what America and everything lead to just one person. You understand me? And that's why when um, our beautiful Michelle Obama making that speech, I have to come back and say there's a systematic racism in the White House. Uh, we have to applaud her. A few first lady can, can really speak up like her. And she never hold back. Well, oh, the sheriff, the sheriff in Wisconsin, that's why they send a letter to the president and they try to stop. Because what happened? It's not that they don't want to have dialogue, you know, but 
everybody just talking crazy, yep. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Yep. And I asked Richie Thomas, Richie Thomas said, yes, sir. I would have just said, President, come, come, come. So, yeah. so that, so that was, just psychology, you know? it, it's not just reverse psychology, but you got to embrace the reality of the moment. If the president's going to come to any place, um, my belief is you want to take that opportunity to try and sit down and have a dialogue because two monologues will never make a dialogue. No. So no matter how much I do not um, like uh, President Trump's policies and his racist, you know, remarks rhetoric. and his rhetoric that he's been pointing out, right? You got it. He's our president still. And he has the ability to make a big difference in many different areas. And we have to have that discussion and challenge him to defend, be it his position or his policy on, be it education, be it health care. We need to have that dialogue. And if he's going to listen to us and say, you know what, I'm going to give you a chance to change my mind. I want to take that shot to try and convince him with the information and the evidence that we have that's to say we need to go a different route. That's why we are going to not create to challenge any guy, you know me. Anywhere, and, follow and, the Trump there. You go anywhere and challenge you. And, and understand me. And that's what you like Mr. Mir is saying. And and look, yeah. it's applying also President Trump's um his own words. The art of the deal. Let's make a deal. If you don't like, you know, a certain type of uh situation, let's make a deal to make it better. Right. Mr. President, we got vacant storefronts, we got housing issues, we got, you know, parks that need an injection. We, we have so many different infrastructure projects here in Mount Vernon, for example, that we could use your help on. And we even need masks, as you can see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have a mask option. So we need those things to come here. So, Mr. President, you know, look, here's a community of color that could use, you know, the power of your office to make the situation better for the people. Don't just, you know, call out. And, 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 and incentivize, you know, violence on people. Just, you know, let's get violent on the problems by solving them. Put some resources behind it. And that's where we can get the challenges. Like, what you hear in the background right now is a garbage truck that belongs to the city of Mount Vernon. And, and, and that garbage truck is over 24 years old. We can have a drink at the bar. That's how old these trucks are. They need to be replaced. What's up, Reverend? How you doing? Life, you know? so, so, so we just know that we want to see more invitations to sit down and talk I would, instead of violence. And I would like to see the protesters or even the police show up at the protest with a barbecue grill. And don't make beef, but grill the beef. That's how you kill beef with people. We put some food on the barbecue and y'all try and chop it up and talk it out over a meal. And I can guarantee you, you'll see that both sides, be it the far right or the far left, we realize that they do have something they can agree on. And we all agree that it could be better. Salute. Salute. Yeah. We had two nurses walk by right yeah. now. We did the big salute. But that's but that's that's what has to happen. So invite the president to sit down, Mayor. Don't 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 try and say don't come. That's 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 counterproductive. Be bigger than that. And not only that to see the rhetoric stepping up, you know, and use a lot of manipulation in technology. But again, we're going to come right back to that. But we could talk about what the Benjamin Center. Yeah. In you know, Mount Vernon. Review, uh, and the review is at the city of Mount Vernon. Remember, under which um, administration, he did propose that we can have what we call a charter amendment. Mm -hmm. And a charter amendment is something that we believe can benefit Mount Vernon, but I watch it now. Yep. Mount Vernon has been a city for many, many years, you know what I mean? A hundred a year, and a lot of things haven't changed, you know? For example, the medieval type of atmosphere, you know, the whole sidewalk, uh, the whole politics, everything. So with this charge, charge amendment, it will bring more burn up to modern time. And, 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 you know, it's going to bring have transparency also. It's going to bring transparency. It's going to bring stronger ethics. It's going to bring um, a comprehensive plan to the city. And it's also going to reinstitute another charter revision commission that's bigger, that's funded, and it's going to rewrite the entire charter. And what makes this the best is that these are all non-controversial 
issues. Everybody agrees on it. So I hope that this November, when this is going to be on the ballot. The Charter Revision Commission worked so hard over the past two years, going through all the political obstruction. They made it through. They got these very important principles on, on the ballot this November. So people in Mount Vernon, you got to turn over the ballot and vote for the revision of the charter to renew Mount Vernon. And again, the, the, the four principles are comprehensive plan. So you know that you have a comprehensive economic plan for the city that's going to do something about these taxes. Do something about these, you know, lack of jobs. Yes. That's right. The sunset. Time was, you know, so every year, 10 years, just like the census, we review the first comprehensive plan. You know, Richard Thomas always believe in coming. This comprehensive plan is to fix the sidewalk. Fix it all. Um, fix it all. That's it. And, it. And, and so what the Charter Revision is doing is it's making it law that the public officials of Mount Vernon can't things the same. Why? Why do they want to keep Mount Vernon down and divided or, or down and out? No, we want to bring it up and build it up. And that's why we um and that's why we're doing this. The other the other um um elements on the charter revision include the um we have independent audit. This yeah. is very important. Tell everybody why the independent yeah. audit is important. Because one of the first mayor who invite transparency. That is why. Okay. It requires an annual independence audit of the city. I show the residents would agree on that, you know what I mean? Very simple. See, an account and finance would be transparent. And we know what we have going along all these years, you know? We're, we're just living in the dark, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, literally. Yeah. So, again, some city in New York State also performed periodic. Audit of the city. That's all vigorous. Some people are with their finance and things. Because again, for us to improve, you know, you have to have an independent audit. It is like a piggy bank. Right? That's right. Right. So that's, that's number two. And number third one is what he just said the quarterly quarterly financial report that Richard Thomas always proposed for the city, for everybody. To see what, what's in the bank. What, what do we what have? Do we, do we have enough money to, yeah. you know, to fix a sidewalk or do we want to put money into fixing parks? Right. And I think, you know, given the, the, the impact of COVID, we need to know what money we actually have access to because this way we can create outdoor spaces, be it for education or for just recreation where people can do stuff outside. And what, what, what we have here right now is there's still no basketball courts on, on the basketball hoops, even though, you know, I mean, don't get me started on that. Let's just, let's just, let's just, let's just, we're just gonna, we gotta, we gotta open the books every four months to see what we got so we can make much better decisions. Let me stay there. Um, why it's important to have um, the quality financial report. Yeah. We are seeing in Kukitsky yep. in 2017 mm -hmm. where, you know, because of the quality financial report, you know, it changed the city charter. You know what I mean? And if you get a regular, you know, what happens, you get a regular report, you know, you get a regular, a regular risk, this response, you know, to the fine city finance, I identify real fast. That's right. You understand me? And not only that, um, you can tra track any, as they say, metric and policy. That's, you, your, that's right. You need to see what your dollars are doing. Right. And, and, and these are all things that most other communities have, but for some reason, we don't have it in Mount Vernon. And no matter how hard we tried, we were blocked by political obstructionists. So here is the chance for the people to get systemic change and make it last by the fourth proposal, because it's going to create a new charter revision commission that's going to have funding and it's going to be required by law to revise the entire charter, take a deeper dive into the issues that truly matter to all of us. So this is on the ballot this November as well, in addition to the presidential election. It's our chance to reclaim and renew Mount Vernon through the charter revision process. You read it, you read it charter review. What is told is that this proposal would require the city to form a charter review commission. What Richard Thomas proposed, you know, I mean, under his administration, you know, every 10 years, you know, with the proposal, examine the city charter, and, you know, proposing change where it's been necessary. You see, we don't have a, like a central, mm -hmm. you know, um, commissioner that can just say, um, 
they are like the eye and the ears and the um near and the you know but what, it, but what it really does is it gives you a system that you can design to perform for people and when you think about the politics of Mount Vernon, the politics of Mount Vernon, they're the problem. Take out Mount Vernon for a moment. Politics is the problem. And if we can get to a place where we just focus on performance, did we get the park built? Did we you know, get the streets paved? Did we get the street lights on? Did we create opportunities for people to get new jobs? Did we bring in new businesses? These are the questions that will answer your concerns and address your frustrations with the high taxes in the crime that you have been seeing, because this is where you have to go back to how, what are the rules of, of the game, per se? What's the structure? And this will help put in a whole new structure to create accountability. And that's what's missing in um, most governments, especially in our world. Right. The city of Jordan is a fundamental structure that gives power to, you know, the power that to be, you know, and it takes time. What does that mean? The function of most city is a city charter part of that, you know. So mm -hmm. we need um you know the four proposal, the ready charter review. Let's go move to the fifth one. No, no, that's it. Those you are know? the four. So those four. And but 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 it's it's just, add on a fifth one. But, 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 <laughs> no, the, the reason why they, they chose four is because these are the most important foundations to create a whole new structure, to create a whole new system. And when you look at Tammany Hall where it was boss tweed and you had one political boss that controlled everything. Right. That's the situation we have here in Mount Vernon because we have that same structure, that same 1892 approach to doing government is by backroom politics. Yes. And this charter revision takes the biggest step in more than a century to restructure Mount Vernon as a whole. And that's something that everybody can be proud of because the backroom politics got us right here in the basement, right in the bottom. Right. You know, and that's where we have to just say, wait a minute, we can do better. We need to do better. We must do better. Let's start by all agreeing on what the facts are. Right. And that's what this charter revision does. It's a big step forward. And and just look at, you know, look, Reggie Lafayette, the he's the election commissioner, he's the county Democratic Party chair boss, he's the city of Mount Vernon Democratic Chair. And he has all this power, but the people in Mount Vernon have been, you know, made powerless to deal with the potholes that we constantly hit when we ride in our cars. And it's like, how come he didn't use his power to make our streets smooth? How come, you know, we don't have all of the perks and the stuff that we need to, to make the people of the city, you know, better? Our benefit. That's right. But the only people that benefited were the people that were very close to him. And, and again, that was his political choice. I just know that the predictability of a system that's designed to be fair, that's designed to be just, something that's going to make sure that we can celebrate and highlight the accomplishments of people. I just want to just make sure that the politics align with more people-focused policies. And, and, and that's what this charter is. It doesn't change the government. It doesn't change nothing. Nope. This it makes them do their job. Better. That's right. All right. Again, we are gloves are gloves on, and then we don't worry about punch. Nope. You know what I mean? You know, right now, me here is Sir Richard, Mama Dale, old gloves. And I, I, I have a man named Bonnie Grant. Bonnie Grant, Mr. Mayor, was our first welterweight champion. On the night when Jamaica was getting independence, yep. Bonnie Grant win the welterweight division. Yes, yeah. sir. I tell you, just imagine that celebration that night. You know, so we are, we are, we are, you know. Yeah, Bunny Grant, um, what was Bunny Grant's song? What was one of the songs that Bunny Grant liked? Yes, sir. The man, uh, um, if I was song with him, like, you know, a lot of people know this song here. Yeah. It named Long Shot Kick the Bucket. Long Shot Kick, kick the, the bucket. bucket. You know what I mean? But then people... Um, we, 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 we are here, you know, not only to give you covered up fear and let you know, you know, awareness what's going on, but give you a see what your gloves are, gloves are, right. and it's inception, this is our third episode, 13th episode, and we really appreciate the people who is punching the lights. All right, we're going to play Bonnie Grant, everybody, every Jamaican, 3D.
before Jamaican election, we're going to talk about that after this song, all right? Yeah. <laughs> the mere pilot. Tell me for this man you have Jamaican. You know? <laughs> yeah. This is going to make great welterweight well champion, Bonnie Grant. There's an election coming up in Jamaica in a couple of days. Yeah, yeah, well, it's Georgia. That's why we're going to do a summary, you know. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. A lot of people going by. Yeah. You know, we're having a lot still. Yes. It's got to come back to life with more life, more business. Um, you get it. You get it. You get it. It happens. I'm talking. It's going to happen. That's right. That's right. So what's up with these elections in um on Thursday? What's on what's on the table? Well, again, you know, we're following it, you know. You know, we're on Future FM, you know, on the um, Tuesday and Friday. So right now we have people on the ground in Jamaica following it. And so far it's been relative a quiet election. Yesterday was um the day when the security force mm -hmm. and the first responder them mm -hmm. cast their vote. You know, that we do. We always do that 72 hours or more before the election, you know what I mean? So they cast their vote, and it's ready. Everything is in place. But when we, we are very surprised that um, even though it's a snap election, we call it a snap election because in Jamaica, in just three and a half weeks, they get to campaign. You, yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like a trick, you know. Yeah. But, you know, so what happened yeah, now? everybody. Yes. Yeah. So, What's going on? You good? All right, good to see you. That's a really um, great mm -hmm. attire, yeah. So, what happened in Jamaica now? The election is ready up. Every MP is there, you know, my constituency, which is Waterhouse in South, 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 um, Southwest St. Andrew, or Southwest, you know, Kingston, you know. Um, it's ready up. And what's surprising about our election, Mr. Mayor? Being a man, wife is running for government. Is that right? Yes, and that. she have a very uh, um. Is a good shot? Yes, and no, she born and grew in the coffee district up there okay. in the, 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 the mountain in our Saint Andrew. Yeah. And she now find out that you know Jamaican cafe coffee, even though it's so well rated and graded, yeah. it's still on the price on the world market. Is that right? So she want to make a different, and that's the one of her. Or campaign play, you know, to make to raise the price. So the farmer not getting the, the, the real money. Now when you look at the world scale, coffee all over the world. Yep, but yep. when you come to Jamaican, yes. yep. when you come to Jamaican Blue Mountain Coffee, it's a world production. Yeah, it's beautiful. So, great, great, great yeah. coffee. Great coffee. So the thing about it, um, she wanted to make the farmer get their right money. You know what I mean? Well, look, the way and the way to do it is they got the, they they have the ability. They got to look at um, you know how it's done in other places. Like in Canada, they have a, a group of businesses and farmers that that make maple syrup, and the the, the farmers that 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 make maple syrup in Canada they organize and they work with you know a, a, within a group. And they make sure that they command the price of their product. Right. That's the way. That's the way. You know, Jamaica got to do it too with the, with the Blue Mountain Coffee. It's amazing coffee. Right. Great coffee. That coffee that I Strong coffee. coffee. But the thing Very it. tasteful. Oh coffee. my God, people! The Blue Mountain Coffee. God. No, no. Am I know. We're coffee. talking about a coffee that grow over. Hey, you need a cup. Hang on. Famous coffee, y'all. <laughs> it's over two thousand up in the mountain. Enough. I got my yeah, yeah. So it is not a coffee that you know uh, we play around it. We price it. I've been drinking that coffee all my life. Hey, we drink that coffee like without sugar, nothing. God, we drink it with rum. All right. Okay. Yeah. No, let me talk about something, Mr. Mayor. That today, today Congress, yeah. Congress has come together today. To take marijuana off the dangerous drug list today. Oh, yeah, and uh, you know, again, 
we heard that there's construction in Mount Vernon I'm up to first dispensary, you know, we don't really show up that. But what do you think about that, Mr. Mayor, now they're gonna, but they don't know what to say it is now. Not only that, there's compensation in it, there is what we call people who have been through so much. I know Mount Vernon was ravaged by the law under certain administration, not yeah. Richard Thomas. You know, Richard Thomas was the first administration that bring what we call, you know, marijuana conference to, to talk about it, you know, and thing, you know. So we see where the government now, given the state, how oh, they're going to deal with it, like the people that was prosecuted. You know, what do you think about that? that, that you know, so, I mean, so, let's, so let's look at, you know, there has to be reparations. There has to be some kind of approach that reconciles the, the wrongs. So all the people that were, you know, charged and, 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 up, and punished no, no job because they had fire. Yeah, you know, like these, these are all things that happened as a result of, of being caught up in an unjust system. So part of it is there has to be acknowledgement that the perspective has changed. And while these people may be doing long years under the Rockefeller drug laws, we all have the power to demand, you know, it's time to, you know, atone for that. And the way we do it is we help those people when they get out of incarceration, we help them get retrained, we help them get back on their feet. And this could be a small test case for what reparations should really look like in the country because you have unfair laws that target communities, particularly communities of color, and there can be a way to say, all right, we have all these grants and all these different programs to build things up. Well, let's give them a preference so that they can try and get their life back. And and those that are not being prosecuted, but they're now being redirected to a diversion program, or they're given a shot for drug treatment, then we still have to work on making sure that those people get healthy as well. But I, I think that, you know, as the laws evolve and you see more and more marijuana dispensaries pop up, the people in the neighborhoods that were, you know, in that business, I think they need to take a careful look at how to get into that business officially. Right. And there has to be, you know, I, I would much rather see the corner store be in a position to, you know, sell this product because it's a product as opposed to someone that's backed by private equity, Wall Street money to build it out and then, take, and then take the jobs away from the people that were there that suffered as a result right. of it being illegal. I think the people that, you know, that are, that are illegally doing it, there needs to be a truce between law enforcement and them. And they need to find a way to say, you have a pathway to, to become legit. And then, you know, if Wall Street wants to come in after that, Fine, but Main Street needs a shot to do it first. Obama said there's a two, a three hundred and ninety million industry cannabis marijuana, whatever you want to call it, in Westchester, both by the planter and by the dispensary. No, that that is not joke, Madam Mr. Mayor. But they are saying now, these these people who used to you know um, sell drugs illegally. And now they're bringing the dispensary, and you know they're bringing on this, say, you know, pharmaceutical level with heavy backings, you know what I mean? You're right, it's still slavery again. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because they're going to come in your neighborhood and they're going to take the money out. Right. You know, and that's where it has to be the local laws, the local elected officials can make the requirements to say that certain percentages of the dollars need to be reinvested into the neighborhood. That's it. No, what is it fair? The federal government said they don't know how to classify it now. They just, <laughs> man, they need to classify it and... Uh, when they take um, alcoholic of a publication, did not they give it name on yeah, them? They, they, they know what they're doing. They're just being lazy. That's all. <laughs> they're being lazy. Oh, my God. All right, so we have to talk about it, Richie. Uh -oh. This really, really close to me, you know. Um, we're saying saying, this one. We have seen the TBA uh, New York State. And we have seen the mayor, even the commissioner in New York say, um, people who should be doing something, not doing something. We're talking about 25 shootings so far. We're talking last year shooting double in New York, the statistic. This week alone, 
over 25 people were shot five fatally and it seemed like a war in New York City and the police is just looking and waiting and you know everybody saying that oh the police them don't have no more overtime they used to have a lot of overtime well, <laughs> and the statistics so, you go to you right, so, go to so and you're in that Russian right, and so. not only that the waiting minutes now for them it pushed now from four minutes now to eight minutes Mr. Yeah. Mayor yeah it's, eight it's minutes so so you know what I mean so we are talking is it is it a deliberate thing that they're doing and and watching people just mean in their one another are, are you know because of because they're saying that or because of protests they they, they you know it's been schools rough on them and you know they demoralized because mm -hmm. of what they're saying yeah. they're defunding a police argument mm -hmm. with people who are over a whole of people over a thousand people mr mayor from march right? yeah. 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 yeah and i mean look yes this is the reality being a police officer your life is at risk they put their uniform on they may not come home and you got to recognize that their job is a tough job. They respond to crime. They respond to places where there is danger and they are and they are um, taking steps to make it safe. They're putting their life on the line to protect someone else's life. So the calls to defund the police and the actions taken to actually defund the police has created the situation where they are not in a position. Oh. Yeah. Forget, forget the feelings for one moment. We're going to come to their feelings and their morale. But they are not in a position from a physical standpoint to respond to all of the crime that is occurring. And that's where you need funds. You have to have these officers on duty for them to respond to a call. So if they're not there, it's going to be longer for them to respond because there are less people working. And that's just the reality. They can hire more police officers, but you defunded the police. You can ask them to do more overtime, they defunded overtime. So how do you expect them to respond? This is the natural response when you have less police. You need to have a situation where there's a balance. It's not defund the police, it's retrain. It's re-engage. It's let's sit down and, and craft a new path. It's not just, all right, take the money away and throw it a different direction. And that's what's been missing. That's what management has to do. And it's not just New York. It's, you know, democratic cities. But, but, but I'm saying, Mr. Mayor, what the, 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 the PBA um, guy did at the RNC the other day, did that make anything better? Until I mean, look, so, um, politics in politics is is going into a very dangerous partisan direction and we have to be very 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 careful about having law enforcement pick a political side because that in and of itself is a recipe for you know worse political things to happen yeah, it's in there, yeah. and, and 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 we already heard from the kenosha wisconsin sheriff right who said he wants to stop black people from having kids and lock them up in a warehouse where they can never get out and then Amazon can build on top of it. That's what he actually said. Not only that, he said he's speaking for other people. He said he's scared to talk and that is made the situation like, yo. Worse. And that's what we need to remove from power. We need to disempower that Etiquette. by re-engaging. And, and there are models out there, successful models. And we can look to what Nelson Mandela did when, you know, he came into power. He created the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. That they need. And, and that's what's needed here in the country. We need to do a Truth and Reconciliation Commission and just reconcile our differences. This is the feelings part. Right. You no, know, somebody's feelings hurt. Okay. You know, hear them out. Acknowledge their feelings. You know, and let's find a way to move forward. Don't even ever fire that guy or penalize him. He was just a spokesman. For many people who who are saying the same thing and seeing this same thing he's saying. They just believe enough that um what we call uh, um you know a, a system that was created in Germany many, many years ago, a yes. systematical system, you know. So we're seeing systematic racism, um, not only in before our eye, but the language is also systematic. So we have to love a brother, he need a hug, 
Like who know the sheriff and make him understand, you know. Um, yeah, it's my own time now, man. Yeah, you don't have to go so hard, my brother. You know, let's go eat some Jamaican food. You need some hot steel, you know, or something. You know, cause you know, yeah, this is modern time now. We should call it. We should tell us call it millennium time. Yeah. All right, the gloves are gloves on, and it's 2020, September the first. We have yeah. cover so much thing, but make it cover and um, what's going on in the. NBA, you know, yeah. what the yeah. guy them did, you know, Bless up. they have turned yeah. the Barclays Center in a voting um, booth, you know, yeah. Yeah. and they have cancelled a lot of games just to support Wisconsin, so we have to salute the NBA and thing, you know, and, you know, continue to NBA, Major League Baseball, you know, everybody taking the steps to, to call for equality, to call for respect and independence. And, and that's what liberty is all about. And I just want to commend the NBA athletes. I mean, I'm going to be in I'm going to be in it for the championship. I will not win James Ado. Oh my God. You just set a record the other day. The only man gone past 13 triple double and everything. Yeah. yeah. This is from 19, 2012. That's in the LA. I haven't been to the second round. Let's see. Let's see what LA is going to do. This guy is like a. A machine, I don't know. Yeah, when is man supposed to be declining? No, nah, he going up. And we have to salute. We have to salute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A man, mm -hmm. not only that, we have to salute. George Town, great. George Thompson. That's right, that's right. George Thompson. Thompson gave rise to Chad Ewan. Yes, and Alonzo Manning. That's right. Yeah. That's only that. Alan Anderson as well. He's the first black man who will have the title in the um, CAA. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I did like him. I like Coach Thompson, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's that tough love right there. <laughs> so, you know, on the, on, in terms of tough love, we're going to dedicate, you know, our outgoing track to, you know, all of the icons that we lost this year from Kobe to Chadwick Boseman. I remember so, my Uncle Cliff there. Uncle Cliff, 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 Robin, Cliff Robin, so Portland, and all oh, our Uncle Cliff, man. Good old, good, good old, you know? And we have to remind you, 100. Yesterday we passed the grim total of 6 million American infected. Infected. Yeah, that one make we have 184,000 plus, you know, fatalities as a result of COVID. We're talking about 25 million world, 25 times. And we're, we're only six months, six months into it. Six months into COVID officially in the United States, let's say. So you're talking about if we go another six months at the same rate, man, we're in trouble. We're talking about 360,000 people. It's serious, people. Yeah, very, very it's serious. very serious. So we got to wear these masks, yeah. wash your hands. Yes, yeah, stay social you know. distance and take it serious, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, a lot of people just not taking it serious. They're not wearing their masks. They're, you know, fighting. You know, if somebody says to break your mask, they're, they're using it as an excuse to start. Pandemonium, don't use it, just come so they can listen, you know, man, you know, and just go along and we soon, you know, I hope we soon get over this, but for now, again, we remind you, over 183,000 Americans, right here where we are, you know, on and it's COVID. And, and this is what, you know, just look out, be it schools, we're going to talk about schools on our next Show, yeah, but, uh, but, today, but today they had postponed today. Schooling was you know, but they postponed it till the 16th of September. And they have a new thing where they call now, um, it named like a digital learning, yeah. The, the distance learning. Distance I mean, learning. look, it's, it's, this concept. is complicated, and this is where government needs yeah. to really use its imagination. So, let's just use Lord and Taylor as a quick example, right? Lord and Taylor. They got stores everywhere. They've been in business for over 100 years. Man, I'm going to miss Lord and Taylor. Yeah, and I wish they would still be able to stay I open. Remember the one up there in East Chester. That's right. right. So now we're in East Chester. Big store. Oh, oh. And, and, and so what needs to happen is we need to look at education as the solution for work. We need to have more teachers and we need to have more creative classroom spaces. So as Lord and Taylor closes or J.C. Penney closes, those spaces yeah. need to become classroom spaces. They need to outfit those malls or those shopping places 
with UV light as like a as a wall of light to kind of disinfect the air that's passing through. Right, right. In this way, a classroom 90 feet away or 100 feet away can have multiple barriers of light that cleanses the air particles that filter around. And you can still have your social distancing, but also activate these, you know, dead zombie commercial properties. Right. And by giving them your neighbors. Right. Immediately. Giving them your purpose. Yeah. And this way, at the very least, you know, the teachers don't have to worry too much about coming out. Coming out and being in a confined space that they know the first way to do it. You're going to have, right, you're going to have, <laughs> so you have more space, more options, and, and it's going to be unconventional. It's, it's going to work. So we got to do something, and that's part of how we got to look at using our spaces differently. And we also got to create new outdoor you spaces. Know, there's statistics say that the space in outdoor, is, you know, God just said they have to get it here. You know, um, but what's going to happen yeah, when the yeah. kids are outdoor and it starts raining? Yeah. You know, are they going to put their, 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 their school bag on the ground? What are they going to do? Like, you have to create, a, a, you have to build this up. It's going to take time. And this is where I'm saying, like, these stores, their furniture rolls in and out. You can create a good classroom situation in some of these spaces that are closing down, but you got to get it. So I just know that. You know, education is 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 going to be one of the biggest solutions, and we need to have a real testing strategy to make sure that teachers are safe right. and our kids are safe when they go to school. And that's where we have to come up with that rapid kind of testing. Truth, you know, Mr. Mayor, we have just seen where they say that the parents are always doing the testing for the kids. Then in school, that 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 program they don't really even believe in it. You know, so you know, it's private yeah. people have to do in their program. God, they don't have. A statistic all the kids them is how many kids who infected you need a direct a direct um statistic for the kids them who's going to school that's what they say yeah. universal in america you know what i mean and so it's sticky and we glad and applaud the mayor i'm over and i'm glad you to postpone today yeah. and postpone the schooling and you know make the kids them go and stay home and take so, so which song you want to dedicate to Mayor de Blasio for his decision to help postpone to give people some time right. to get ready to you know get back to education, get back to learning. Yeah, man. You know, we have a song in Jamaica we call New York, New York, you know. <laughs> um, chill out, chill out, New York. Black Hole, our first Grammy winner. Waterhouse, Firehouse, Michael Rose, Ducky Simpson, Puma Jones, you know, Jonah Reed. So we have a player. Chill out, chill out in New York. I'm here, Richard Thomas. You know, gloves are gloves are. Yeah, you know, one of them songs there. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, song there. You know yeah, I would just play yeah. Bright Light Big City. That's New York, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we love New York. We hope the people yeah, we understand that. that. Yeah, we, um, we give thanks yeah. and go out and vote. It's very instrumental to do that. You know what to do, but it doesn't make sense. Right. You're gonna make opportunity like this fast. Come out, come out and vote. Um, and in Jamaica, if you're listening to us, go out and vote and support, support. You know, um, the government you love. Everybody know my government in Jamaica. You know, everybody know my government in Jamaica. And okay, we don't go right. Yeah, but we love the Jamaica Labour Party. I'm a mother and father also. You know, I love it. But big up everybody and congratulate all the winner. But we have a grueling election over here in the USA, and we have 62 days to go. And so far, Joe Biden is leading over um, double digit, you know. But again, remember Hillary Clinton was leading almost similar right around this time. And for some reason, she broke out to anything. So, and again, people, it's a honor. Me and Richard Thomas come and give you gloves up, gloves up. I'm going to make the mayor take you out to this one. So look, New York, New York, we gotta tap into that spirit. Yeah. And we're gonna we gonna make sure that that empire state of mind yeah. you know, continues to rise. So just know that uh, despite the COVID and all the challenges, we're gonna conquer them all. It's gonna be New York, New York. What's up? So bottom line, this has been gloves on, gloves off, it's been more gloves on. Yeah. But we've been taking swings at the issues, gloves off, especially at Kenosha. For, for that ethnic cleanse. <laughs> 
comment. You gotta, yeah. you gotta clean that out. That gotta go. Clean that out. Clean that out. Apologize and we give him a program. Yeah. Where he write what he said one million times. And I don't call for me. It's not that serious. All right. But well, we also going to send praise and brother. blessings. One brother. Praise and blessings up for Chadwick Bozeman. Yes. And you know everybody check that colon. I know men it's uncomfortable, but you got to get it done. Black Panther. Yeah. The loser star. The loser star. A big star. Yeah. All right. Until the next edition of gloves on, gloves on. Tell somebody about it. Tell somebody what's That's going right. to be. Richard Thomas. Oh, I'm going to be there. We want to hear from you. Yeah. Make sure you like and subscribe because I'm telling you, go and keep chatting up. And we're going to see you back on Thursday when we talk about the results of the Jamaican election. Bless up. Bless up.